Lisa Ann Coleman was born October 6, 1975, and executed on September 17, 2014. Lisa was an American woman executed in Texas for the 2004 starvation death of nine-year-old Davante Marcel Williams. Davante's mother, Marcella L. Williams, was Coleman's partner, and she was also arrested after his death. While Marcella Williams agreed to a plea deal in exchange for a sentence of life imprisonment, Coleman refused a plea deal was convicted of capital murder, and received a death sentence. The death of Davante Williams was one of several child deaths that placed Child Protective Services CPS under scrutiny. His home had been investigated by CPS several times before Davante died. Some of those investigations involved allegations of neglect and Davante and his sister had been removed from the home for a year in 1999 because of physical abuse allegations against Coleman. The state of Texas used kidnapping as the aggravating circumstance to justify a capital murder charge in Coleman's case. Coleman's appeals attorneys argued that no kidnapping had occurred because Davante had been in his own home and had been seen walking around his apartment complex days before he died. The United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit rejected that argument. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to intercede, and Coleman was executed in 2014. Coleman was born in Tarrant County, Texas. She was conceived when her mother was raped by Coleman's step-grandfather. She was bitten with extension cords by an uncle and was sent from one foster home to another as a child. Coleman's mother, who nicknamed her Pig, rarely saw Coleman while she was in foster care. A cousin stabbed Coleman in the back when she was 11 years old. A relative provided Coleman with drugs and alcohol when she was in her teens. Coleman had a 10th grade education. She had a child when she was 16 years old. As a young adult, Coleman went to prison twice for burglary and for possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. Beginning in the late 1990s, Coleman lived with her girlfriend, Marcella L. Williams, born February 1981, and Williams' two children in Arlington, Texas. Marcella's son Davante was born prematurely, and he had developmental disabilities. Marcella had become became the subject of a CPS investigation before she lived with Coleman. A 1995 complaint alleged that Marcella, 14 years old at the time, was not watching two-month-old Davante. CPS caseworkers monitored the home for six months. In 1999, Davante and his one-year-old sister were removed from the home due to concerns for physical abuse. When CPS investigated, Davante had thinning hair, bruises on his back, and swelling on his lip and his penis. Marcella regained custody of the children after a year when she met the requirements set by CPS. As part of this arrangement, Williams was ordered to stay away from Coleman. The home was investigated a total of six times by CPS for allegations of neglect, physical abuse and emotional abuse. On July 26, 2004, Marcella Williams called 911 and told a dispatcher that her son had stopped breathing. When emergency medical personnel arrived, they determined that Avante had been dead for at least several hours. The nine-year-old weighed 35 pounds and had 250 scars on his body when he died. 
There were infected wounds on his wrists and legs where he had been bound with plastic extension cords. There was a fresh tear in the child's lip and a healing tear where the ear meets the side of the head. A blood stain was found on a golf club in the home. Coleman and Marcella Williams were arrested, charged with injury to a child, and held in jail in Arlington on $200,000 bond. Those charges were later upgraded to capital murder. The Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office said that malnutrition caused Davante's death. They said that pneumonia also contributed to his demise. During the ensuing investigation, Coleman told authorities that she sometimes struck Davante with a belt and that sometimes, with Marcella Williams' help, she tied Davante up. After the deaths of Davante and several other children in Texas, the governor's office opened an inquiry into CPS child maltreatment investigations. A spokesperson for CPS acknowledged that the Williams home had been the subject of CPS involvement for several years. She said that the family moved frequently in an attempt to avoid CPS investigations. Caseworkers had lost track of the family in 2002. Around the same time, he stopped attending school, and school district employees were told that he had moved to another school. When some of Davante's family members asked about him, Davante was said to be living with other relatives. In 2005, a Texas Senate bill sponsored by Jane Nelson gave $200 million to CPS to hire and train additional staff members. Marcella Williams agreed to plead guilty to murder in exchange for a sentence of life imprisonment. She will not be eligible for parole until 2044. Coleman rejected a plea deal and went to trial for capital murder in 2006. Coleman's defense attorney, Michael Highskill, said that Davante was small because of his history of prematurity. He said that Coleman did not actually live with Marcella Williams and her three children. High School said that because Davante was hyperactive. They sometimes restrained him so that he would not hurt himself or his family members. Davante Williams had been a victim of incompetent parenting, not murder, he said. After the jury deliberated for an hour, Coleman was convicted of capital murder. In the punishment phase of the trial, Coleman's attorneys raised several potential mitigating circumstances in an attempt to spare Coleman a death sentence, including the illicit nature of her conception, her early exposure to alcohol and drugs, and the abuse that caused her to end up in foster care. A child abuse expert testified for the defense about the intergenerational effects of abuse. Coleman's lawyers also said that Coleman had bipolar disorder. The jury rejected the mitigating circumstances and sentenced Coleman to the death penalty. Coleman was represented during her appeals by John Stickles of Arlington. She also received assistance from Brad Levinson, the lead attorney at the Office of Capital Writs, Ock the agency responsible for representing Texas death row inmates during their appeals. Stickles felt that Coleman was being unfairly targeted as a black lesbian. To sustain a capital murder charge, the state of Texas had needed to prove the existence of an aggravating circumstance such as a second crime that Coleman committed in relation to the murder. Citing evidence that Davante had been bound and locked in a pantry, prosecutors advanced kidnapping as the aggravating circumstance in Coleman's case. In subsequent motions, Stickles questioned whether a child could be kidnapped in his own home. 
Levinson said that Coleman's original attorneys had failed to investigate evidence that would have disproven the kidnapping allegation, such as the claims of neighbors that Davante had appeared happy and unrestrained at functions within his apartment complex in the days before he died. On September 16, 2014, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit rejected the argument against the kidnapping charge. And the U.S. Supreme Court elected not to issue a ruling in the case. The next day, Coleman was executed by lethal injection using the drug pentobarbital. While she was the 1,389th person executed in the U.S. since executions resumed in 1976, she was only the 15th woman executed during that time. Thank you for watching.